In this video, we are going to construct the ideal gas law from the results we've explored in the, in the previous three videos, namely Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law. All right, so where we are so far is a series of three relationships which explore, in the first case, the relationship between volume and pressure, Boyle's Law, volume and temperature, direct proportionality in Charles' Law, and another direct proportionality between volume and amount in Avogadro's law. So if we put all of these together, right, we can combine these expressions to basically say that volume is proportional to the product of amount times temperature divided by pressure. Okay. Now, if we want to change this proportionality right, into an equality, well then what we need to do is figure out what constant uh, makes this uh, um, equation hold for your general gas, any gas you might encounter. Okay? And so the interesting thing about uh, you know, this problem is that no matter what gas you choose, we can convert our proportionality into an equality using the exact same constant, and we call that constant R, and we're gonna call it the gas constant, Right? And this gas constant has a, a specific numerical value depending on what units you choose and it will allow us to construct the so-called ideal gas equation. Ideal gas equation right? that <clears throat> describes uh, the relationship between pressure, volume, amount, and temperature for literally any gas um, that you decide to use. Okay. And so the numerical value for this gas constant uh, is 0 0.08206 if you're using units of liters, atmospheres, mole, and Kelvin. Okay. And so you can see from this problem, if you were to rearrange and solve for R, R is equal to a PV over NT. Okay. So this is the reason for this collection of units here. PV, uh, pressure times the volume, liter times the atmosphere. NT, amount, is moles, and temperature, remember, is always given in Kelvin, okay? All right, so this is gonna prove extremely useful um, for us to be able to solve a variety of different problems. And we're gonna explore that in a second. But before we do so, I just want you to remember that you know, this ideal gas equation was built up from each one of these separate relationships, Charles, Boyle, and Avogadro's law. So in a very real sense, right, each one of these separate laws can be derived from that ideal gas equation. Okay? So in the first case of Boyle's law, we're looking at the relationship between pressure and volume. Okay? And so we're going to hold all of these other terms constant. So if we hold, denote all of the variables held constant in red, and we know that R is of course a constant, we can solve this equation for volume, and we get volume equals NRT over P. NRT is just a constant, so we basically are arriving at that proportionality that we saw previously, where volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Okay? And we can carry out that same sort of analysis um, for each one of these other ones. Charles' law, we're gonna be holding N and P, the amount and pressure constant, and so we see that volume is directly proportional to temperature, and volume is directly proportional to amount. Okay, so really, once you have this ideal gas law, you can solve all of these other problems that we've seen um, you know, thus far in our discussion of ideal gases. Okay? But the ideal gas law allows us to you know, even take things a, a step further. And, and solve a different type of problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, but the kind of problems that we can solve using our PV equals NRT. So the, the, the first problem we're gonna look at requests us to calculate the volume occupied by a given number of moles of nitrogen gas at a pressure 1.37 ATM and a temperature of 315 Kelvin, okay? All right, so just as with any word problem, what we're gonna to wanna to do is write out what we're given, okay? We're first told that we need to figure out what the volume is. We don't know what the volume is, but we know 
that we're going to be starting off with 0 0.845 moles of nitrogen gas. And we know that the pressure is 1.37 atm. And the temperature is 315 Kelvin. Okay, So we have four variables here. And one of them is unknown. And of course, we know that we're going to be using PV equals and RT right, to solve this problem. So what we need to do is take all, all of these variables and look at that PV equals NRT equation and consider what it is that we have to do in order to solve for that unknown. So basically, uh, we're going to be isolating for V. V is our unknown in this case. So V, getting V by itself on the left-hand side, requires us to divide both sides by the pressure. Okay. And then we're, we're all set to go ahead and start plugging in values. But here is where I encourage you guys to pause for a second and make sure that our units are making sense. Before you just blindly plug in numbers, check for a second, make sure that our units are all lining up. Okay, so remember on the previous slide we saw that R, our value for this uh, ideal gas, uh, gas constant, is 0.08206 if we're in liters of, or units of liters, atmospheres, mole, Kelvin. Okay, so if we go back to our problem now and check those units, we are in fact given a unit of pressure of atmospheres, unit amount of moles, and unit of temperature of Kelvin. Okay, so all of our units are actually gonna match our given form of this ideal gas constant. So we're actually in a good shape to go ahead and solve for the volume. Okay. So let's go ahead and write everything out explicitly. We know that uh, N is 845 moles. R we just have here. And of course, R is something that will be given to you. You just need to know how to use it, when to use it. We're given a temperature, 315 Kelvin. And then we're dividing by a pressure of 137 ATM. Now we can go through here and be careful, make sure that moles cancel out, make sure all of our units cancel out, Kelvin cancels out, ATM cancels out, and so we're going to be left with a final answer that's in units of liters of volume, which in this case comes down to a uh, you know, final volume of uh, roughly 15.9 liters. Okay, so this is the general game we're going to play. Um, let's go ahead and look at one more example uh, to, to you know, round this out. Um, the basic approach is going to be the same each time. We are going to look at our problem, write down the given information, make sure that uh, you, you know, we are in the correct units, and then it becomes a plug and chug problem using PV equals NRT. So in this case, we are asked to calculate the number of moles of gas in a 3.24 liter sample it happens to be an inflated basketball and we know the pressure of this basketball is 24.3 psi right and we know the temperature is 25 degrees celsius okay so we're going to go ahead and use our ideal gas constant and you know with this unit issue in mind yeah you should immediately uh, be drawn to the fact that each one of these, vol these uh, you know, variables here, they're not necessarily matching up with the units uh, provided in that gas constant. All right? So we've got to change one of them, and oftentimes you know, I believe it's easier to just go ahead and change uh, the given values for um, you know, our temperature and pressure to line up. So with temperature, it's relatively straightforward. We're going to add 273. So we're going to have a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin. All right. For the pressure, we're going to go ahead and convert PSI into ATM. And so then you go ahead and use our conversion factor of 1 ATM is roughly 14.69 PSI. Gives us a value for our pressure that is 1.65 ATM. We'll carry some more digits there, hold off on our round until the very end. And then we will have all of our variables um, in agreement with the given values for uh, our gas constant R. So now we can go ahead and solve PV equals NRT for N. So 
So n is going to be equal to PV over RT. Plug in our known values, 1.6535 ATM. Volume is 3.24 liters. R is 0.08206 liters. Atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And finally, our temperature is 298.15 Kelvin. So we'll have our three sig figs at the end of the day, keeping track there. Watch our units. ATM cancels out, liters cancels out, and Kelvin cancels out. One over moles in the denominator moves that moles up to the numerator, and we arrive at our final answer of final answer here of 0 0.219 moles. Okay, so that sums things up then. We have introduced in this video this ideal gas equation. We've seen how the ideal gas equation is derived from Charles Law, Boyle's Law, um, and Avogadro's, and how we can use that ideal gas equation to go back the other direction to uh, you know, go back to each one of those respective laws and how we can use the ideal gas equation to not only solve the ratio problems we've explored in the previous videos, but now solve for you know, properties, you know, any one of these thermodynamic variables, four thermodynamic variables, given the other three.